All right. Uh, in previous videos, we already introduced uh, the gravity model of international trade. We also discussed the empirical evidence. Um, it looks like, you know, at least the two pieces of evidence supports um, the model, right? The hypothesis. Um, here, what we're going to see is the model is not perfect, okay? Um, oftentimes, the model we use or estimate is just a simplified version of the reality, okay? So we should keep that in our mind. And um, here, we just want to briefly discuss uh, when or where the gravity model um, is not perfect, okay? Now, let's revisit uh, um, the... Uh, empirical evidence we discussed in previous video, okay? Again, the vertical axis is the percent of the U.S. Tr uh, trade with EU, okay? And the horizontal axis is the percent of the EU G GDP. Uh, in other words, uh, the horizontal axis shows the relative size of each uh, European economy in EU, okay? And the vertical axis is the relative uh, share of uh, these economies trade with the U.S. compared to the total trade between U.S. and EU, okay? Now, previously, we said that there's a very strong uh, positive correlation between these two. That tells us size, matter, uh, uh, size matters, right? Which is exactly what the gravity model uh, tells us. Uh, however, when we take a closer look at um, these economies along the trend line or the regression line, we may find something interesting. Okay, So for example, when we look at Netherlands and Belgium, um, given their economic size in EU, uh, we find they are actually trading more with the United States than other um, then, then, I'm sorry, then the uh, predicted uh, values offered by the, um, the gravity model, okay? So for the Belgian size, again, right here on the trend line should be how much they trade with the U.S. As you can see, they actually trade like twice as much as the predicted one. Um, here is for Netherlands, okay? And... Um, uh, its economy accounts for about approximately 5% uh, in EU. So it should trade approximately 5% or a little above 5% with the U.S., okay, based upon the gravity model. But actually, it trades about 10% um, uh, of the e, uh, EU and the U.S. trade, okay. Now, why is that? And okay? why they stay above the trend line? Here, we probably have to look at the, uh, the map, okay, the geography of these two economies. Now, you find here is Belgium and here is Netherlands. And both economies, although they are quite small in size, okay, like uh, geographically, okay, uh, but they have many important ports um, in West Europe. Okay, so we find a lot of uh, European-made goods, uh, especially industrial ones, being shipped to Belgium and Netherlands so that they can eventually put on the contain container ships and, you know, um, ship to uh, ship across the Atlantic. Okay, so uh, if we look at Netherlands, uh, we find that, uh, for example, Rotterdam, one of the largest uh, Western Europe uh, seaports, um, is located just um, near the mouth of Rhine. Rhine is this uh, uh, river here, uh, the blue one, which is the lo longest um, river in West Europe. Okay, And this river runs past the um, industrial heartland in Germany. Okay. So a lot of German-made uh, products, okay, they were uh, shipped uh, along this waterway to Rotterdam, 
and finish the final steps of their industrial、um, production, and then、uh, being put into the container ships and eventually、uh, go to、uh, the U.S. market. Okay, so these would be counted as Netherlands export to the United States. Okay, that's why you find these、uh, economies stays above the trend line. Okay. At the same time,、uh, we find that Spain,、uh, given its size, actually trade much less with the United States than the gravity model would、uh, predict. Okay, so、um, these might be because of the、uh, language and cultural barriers. Okay, because they speak different language and different cultures, so、um, that could be、uh, one of the reasons. We believe the spam actually、uh, trade less than、uh, the predicted value here. Okay,、uh, putting together what we're saying is、um, once again the model, no matter it's a gravity model or any other models、uh, in economics, is the simplified version of the reality. Okay, so when it comes to reality, when we're trying to predict the actual.、Uh, Value like here, the actual trade volume, we should、uh, factor in um, more um, factors. Okay, consider、uh, more complicated situations. All right,、uh, but this doesn't mean the the model、um, does not work. Of course, the mar the model works. Okay, the mar the model works well in this case. Okay, because it gives a very strong predicting power.、Uh, At least、uh, between the you know the size of the economy and the、uh, trade volume, okay. But it's not just it, but but it's just not perfect, okay. All right.、Uh, the second case we're going to look at is、uh, given the size,、uh, the distance,、uh, where we can also look at you know under what circumstances,、um, you know the gravity model.、Uh, Does not work properly. Okay, now here、um, the factor、uh, we're gonna specifically focused upon is the national border. Okay, we're gonna look at this uh,、um, uh, geographic distance、um, between the Canadian provinces themselves and between these provinces and the U.S. states. Okay, so for example. Uh, the first pair、uh, of the Canadian provinces we're looking at is between、uh, British Columbia, which is numbered zero here in the map, and Alberta, which is a、uh, laboring、uh, province. Okay, so the、uh, geographic distance between these two states is approximately equal to. The distance between、uh, British Columbia and the state of Washington in U.S. as you can see here, because、uh, both are again are laboring states or, or provinces. Okay.、Um, however, you would find a, a big difference in terms of their trade. So the trade between、um, British Columbia and Alberta accounts for six point nine percent of GDP. However, the trade between British Columbia and state of Washington in U.S. accounts for only 2.6 percent of GDP. In other words, British Columbia trades much more with、um, Alberta,、um, you know, than Washington. Okay. Another example we can look at Quebec here. Yeah,、uh, in terms of the geographic、uh, distance.、Uh, The Quebec is、uh, eastern province in Canada, so the distance between British Columbia and Quebec is approximately the same as that between British British Columbia and New York. Okay, and、um, again, if we go back here on this、uh, map, you can find that British Columbia is here, Quebec is here, number five, and、uh, New York、uh, State is here, number. Uh, number whoops, this one, number five. 
right? So again, their geographic、uh, distance is similar, but their trade volume、um, is quite different. Okay, so the trade between Quebec and British Columbia accounts for one point six, one point four percent of GDP, but only point one percent, one tenth percentage points、uh, between British Columbia and New York. Okay. So the conclusion or the observation we made here is much more trade between the pair, pairs of Canadian provinces than between Canadian provinces and the U.S. states, even when holding distance constant. Okay, so here,、um, you know, our common sense would say that if we hold the distance constant, then the transport cost should be more or less the same, right? And if we think about, you know, U.S. and in Canada, you know, these are buddies, right? The allies, and there, these are,、um, you know,、uh, pretty good labor,、uh, labors. Okay, they they share the same language、um, for most of the their their territories. They、uh, have very similar values, cultures, even the legal system, right?、Uh, however. When we look at their trade data, we find a big difference. Okay, we find that you know,、uh, national border here still determines trade as much as if the countries were fifteen to twenty-five hundred miles apart. Okay,、uh, it's, it's still a very important factor.、Um, we should not leave out when we give the policy suggestions. Okay, in other words, when we step out of our Um, um, office or classroom, okay, and trying to、um, hit the reality. All right, and、um, so here we already、uh, wrap up our discussion about the first section in chapter two. Okay, who trades with who? Okay, we basically talk about the gravity model and、um, talk about its strong predicting power, along with、um, the exceptions. Or、uh, when this model doesn't work、um, perfectly, okay. And、um, so the next、uh, section of this chapter, we're gonna、uh, start talking about the trading patterns. In other words,、um, what specifically we're trading, okay? Like manufacturers versus agricultures versus services. All right, so、uh, we're going to talk about that in the next video.